what, what's up? This is Alaric Ong, and today I'm here with Dave Seymour. And Dave is a uh, he, he's a fund manager in a hundred million dollar private equity fund, and uh, he's also one of the partners of um, Kevin Harrington. And he's also starring. Uh, he has also starred in the show of um, A and E's show Flipping Boston. Okay, and it's a huge pri- privilege to be able to interview him. And hi, hi, Dave. How how are you doing? I'm well, Alaric. How are you, my friend? I'm I'm pretty good. Yeah. So good, maybe you can share, share with us a little bit about your journey. How do you get started in um in starting to become a private equity fund manager? You know, and I'm I'm sure yeah. I can learn a lot, and I'll be writing a lot of notes as you are speaking. Yeah. Yeah. T- take some notes and get your checkbook out. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's always right. It's always it's always great to to be able to connect and touch gloves with folks all over, all over the world, man. How how sweet it is, right? We're living in this digital age. Look, I'm um. I'm old school. I'm kind of like a blue collar guy in a in a white collar world. I I emigrated to the states from England back in 1986. Uh, I come from a from just a working class family, man. I mean, uh, we never had money. We didn't know we were broke as kids. As long as you gave me a football and a field, I was going to go play soccer all day, and it didn't matter. But um, you know, you, you you grow up and and things change. I came to the states, like I said, in '86, and um, I, I I followed you know I followed a plan that that a lot of people follow you know, go out and get a good job and do the right thing, show up, do a solid eight hours. And it didn't work for me financially because I was really good at spending money. I wasn't really good at working money, right? Like, mm-hmm. like I, I knew how to keep up with the Joneses, cars, boats, and leather coats. I didn't understand what assets were. I didn't understand investment of any structure. So, you know, you pay a price for ignorance. Anyway, I found myself um, in a pretty bad spot, um, 2006 and seven. A couple of marriages had gone wrong. Um, I had a, uh, a uh, my, my son, Robert, was then maybe 10 years old. And, um, you know, I was losing that connection with the people that I loved because I was a uh, financially challenged. We'll leave it at that. Anyway, I, I went to an event and started to learn real estate. Um, I'd been a firefighter for 16 years and a paramedic and um, done some construction on, on the days off. Look, man, I, uh, I knew that there was something in this real estate game. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The guys that showed up to some of the construction sites that I was on and, and the girls that showed up there, I mean, they were, they were driving nicer cars. They, they, you know, they had a smile on their face. You know what I'm saying? So I just began learning real estate, um, buy, fix and flip, single families, you know, I, I learned how to make 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 120,000 dollars on one property in a, in a short period of time. And, um, you know, I never, I never looked back. So, you know, I, I'm a product of the seminar world, really, you know, events, learning from, from other people who have um, been and done what I wanted to do. And, um, you know, I've, I've always been grateful for the folks that taught me. Awesome. Yeah, I, I'm a product of the seminar world as well. I went for my first seminar when I was like 16 years old. And then I eventually I became a speaker and started conducting my own seminars as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look, it's a, so, it's a great world, man. As long as you, as long as you align yourself with the right people, correct. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of people who can talk, <laughs> a lot yeah. of talkers out there, but um, aligning yourself with the right people, the right guidance, coaches, mentors, trainers, you know, invest in yourself first is what I was told. I scraped together the last money that I could to, to, to start fixing this, you know, cause my brain was a little skewy, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, how do you get started into like, like, I, I, do you own the private equity fund or how do you get started with, you know, building a fund and was it scary, yeah, no, you know, no, raising yeah. funds from people? Yeah, great, great question. You know, it's, um, COVID was, was what really brought us to that point. Um, I was running a hard money lending business, buy, fix and flip business. I was out actually, um, speaking and teaching all over the, all over the world, um, Canada, England, the United States teaching real estate investing at a high level. And then COVID came in and it just put the brakes on everything. So, you know, a lot of people just stopped, right? Fear took over. So I, I connected with a couple of really strong business partners. I brought some youth onto the team, um, our chief operations officer, Eric, uh, Wilson, and then uh, reconnected with a very dear friend of mine, German by the name of Walter Novicki. Walter is over 20 years of buying um, multifamily assets in the Gulf Coast region of Florida as well as ground up development. You know, he's been through two, two cycles of, 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 uh, of the real estate economy. You know, we, we've been through the dark days as well as the light. But anyway, um, you know, when nobody's um, 
uh, buying my notes on Wall Street in the hard money lending business, I'm out of business. I can't travel because of COVID. Um, <clears throat> so what we did was, was we looked at it and he said, you know, what is it? What's the denominator? Well, it's he or she who controls the capital is going to win the race. So I don't want to rely on, on banks for, 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 for my, you know, my business um, equity. So we, we created the fund. And in the, in the States, we have to put together a Securities and Exchange Commission compliant fund. Uh, it's a 506C Regulation D fund. It's a Reg D fund. It allows me to, to start marketing to raise capital. And, um, you know, that, that's it. I mean, the, the, the leads um, and the deal flow is, it's, it's redonkulous, brother. It really is. It's absolutely redonkulous. Like, because we, we don't fight with the Grant Cardones and the bigger guys that are out there. Let those guys go pay way too much money for the assets. We like the smaller assets, the 40 to 150 unit apartment complexes. And in that pool mm -hmm. with our track record, we get the very best deals. So now, you know, the, the money is, is coming um, in, in our direction, not as fast as we would like. You know, we're offering seriously um, aggressive returns. I think we need to dial them back because when you start telling people, you know, we target out 10 to 14% returns on their money, yeah, yeah, right. you know, people go, right? People go, you can't do that. And I'm like, yeah, we can. I, I might just say it's 6 to 8% and leave it alone and maybe more, more, more capital coming our direction. <laughs> But um, yeah, that you know, there's there's an art to it. It's not just like yeah. throw up a throw up a page and the money comes running in. You got to know what the hell you're doing, you know. Yeah. So, but so is it scary, like managing so much of capital? You know, like wait, <laughs> like are you able to sleep at night? <laughs> is it scary? Yeah, look, of course it's scary, dude. Anybody who tells you that that they don't have fear, they're a liar. Um, you know, no matter what your belief and your and your faith is, uh, you know we're put on this earth to serve each other. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I have a little prayer that I say every morning and it's simply, you know, replace my fear with faith and then act. And are my okay. actions in line with my intentions? And if I can answer yes to those things, then, you know, it's easier to get up and go every day. Look, man, I, I, I can make a statement that not many investors at my level can make. And it's, and it's truth. Uh, me and my team, have never in all of our careers over 30 plus years have lost one dime of investor capital, not one penny. Uh, we've made our, our distributions. Wow. Um, wow. We've never given a property back to the bank. We've never foreclosed. Um, have, I, have I taken some lumps and bumps? Yeah. But, um, you know, I take, I take it. Um, I don't ever roll the dice with anybody else's capital because I've been broke. I know what it feels like to not have money. Um, and look, in this, in this industry, everything is based on authenticity and trust, right? Uh, mm -hmm. you gotta, you gotta, people can talk. I said it before, right? I want to see the action. I want to see the, you know, can I, can I reach the CEO, right? Can I call, you know, I can't call, uh, you know, the, the, the CEO of Blackstone. I can't call those guys. I can't, you know, I can't call the fund manager on wall street. But when you invest with Freedom Venture Investments and you're part of our team, well, you know, you have access to, to, the, to the team. And we keep, we're, we're oh, proud yeah. of that. We're proud of the communication, you know. But yeah, look, man, I'm scared. I'm a big, bad mamma jamma. Just ask me. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a bad man, you know. But, no, uh -huh. I, I, you know, but I, I got fear. You know, I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning hoping that, you know, I've, I've covered all the bases for the next day for sure. But what about you? I mean, you know, we're, we're all the same. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What, what about me? Oh, you, I, I'm just a. I'm just yeah, a man. Marketing. Yeah. <laughs> I just think you're a marketing at all. Yeah. Look, man, it doesn't matter whether we're in marketing or we're delivering, yeah. uh, you know, uh, services. You know, you have a reputation to keep as well. I, I, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you bring up that word fear. And, you know, a lot of people are like, no, nah, I got no fear. We all do. We all do. Yeah. It's what you do when the fear shows up, right? It's as simple as that. So that's that's how I look at it. I, I see it, look at it, and then then attack it. I see. So so do you conduct your own seminars as well, or you just do investments primarily? No, that's a great question. I've um I, I've I've had um our own brand um mm -hmm. back in the day uh, when the TV show was airing uh, more often than it is now. Um, but I've found for me, you know, the amount of uh, lifting and work necessary uh, for, for a seminar business is, is really, it can be overwhelming, right? 
So what I found was, was in my speaking career and my teaching career, I aligned myself with, with the, the people that were the very, very best at delivering what they sold. And then I would go out there and support those, those activities. Uh, but it's interesting. We're, we're, we're building our own online business now. Um, I don't want to sell education because I think the expectation for education is always too high, right? Um, you know, you go to college and get a degree. There's no guarantees. You just get a degree if you pass the test, right? But uh, you go to a seminar and they say, hey, you're going to get rich doing real estate. People only hear you're going to get rich, <laughs> you know? So they don't, they don't always hear the amount of work and effort that goes into it. So we're, uh, we're very much oriented towards, you know, having business services, good websites, good, uh, you know, software to automate uh, a real estate investment business, that kind of stuff. And then the education is just, uh, you know, free. It's part of the, you know, it's part of the investment that uh, people can make. So we're building that out. Uh, plus, we don't have to travel all over the world anymore unless we want to, you know? Yeah. So just like you mentioned that, like, he or she who owns the capital wins the race, right? Now, but do you think that it's possible for someone without capital to, you know, still be successful? Yeah, look, man, I'm, I'm playing in a bigger, bigger sandbox today, right? I'm raising $100 million in private equity at $100,000 a time minimum investment. Um, you know, I'm probably a couple of million into building this business with no return. Okay, so, you know, think, think about that for a second. Um, okay. When I started, um, I had very little capital. You know, like I said, I've, I've been in a position where my house was in pre-foreclosure. Uh, the last of my capital went out to educate my brain and reset my, my mind. Um, uh, how and much the education was that, I invested in? What, uh, I, I was think that? it was like 20, yeah, I think it was like 20, 22, $27,000. We put it on my wife's credit cards because that was all she had left. And, and you know what? <laughs> our, the, the education wasn't that good. But, but what, <laughs> I, what, I, I realized, what I realized was this was I kind of purchased accountability. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I had, yeah. I had that, that money now behind me and it was like, yeah. that's what pushed me forward. So, that's you know, true. the actual transactions were no money down. I learned how to wholesale single family houses. I learned how to, you know, you know do owner financing, lease options, those kinds of things. So I, I, I did no money down technically real estate, but I, I had to know what the heck I was doing that first brother. You know what I mean? Yeah. Otherwise, you know, you're just, you're just throwing crap against the wall and hoping it sticks. So do you um, invest in businesses as well or only real estate? That's a great question. Um, I have invested in, in, a, in a couple of smaller businesses in my career. Um, but here's, here's what I found is, is there's guys and girls out there that, you know, their, their tag to excellence is the fact that they own 78 businesses or something of that nature, right? Mm -hmm. I've, I'm from the school where I want to do one thing exceptionally well. And within mm -hmm. real estate, there are four or five, maybe even more businesses within just the real estate genre okay. that, that you can invest in. Lending, brokerage, mm -hmm. commercial, single, uh, moving services, uh, design services. You know, you can, you can go crazy with it. So uh, I like to stay in the sandbox that I'm competent in. And, you know, if you said to me tomorrow, hey, Dave, you know, I've got a, a marketing company that's going to be 10x in 10 years. You know, I, I wouldn't know. I don't know how to gauge, you know, expertise in that marketplace. So, you know, that's, that's, that's my direct answer to that question. I like, I, to, I like to know what it is I'm doing. So, so when you raise a hundred million, is that like you raise a hundred million dollars in cash or like, let's say you raise maybe $10 million in cash and then the other 90 million is from the bank and yeah. Yeah, no, no. So the, the private equity is a hundred million and then we never leverage over 65% on acquisition. So our banking relationships, um, you know, bring up the, uh, bring up the, the, the front position on, on the acquisitions. So we buy, we buy all of the assets inside the fund and then uh -huh. the investors, you know, when it maxes out at 100 million, we can now buy, you know, 300 million in real estate in assets under management. So we, we use Got the it. bank in first lien, ne never over leverage because it makes the cash flow better for the investors. Never over 65%. Okay, so, so the maximum, okay, so let's say you have $100 million in capital, 
the maximum you would have assets under management will be 130 million. Is that is that something else? Is that what you're saying? No, no. If we if we have 100 million in ca- in access to capital, liquid capital, we now yeah. have 300 million in buying power. Got it. Got it. So the okay. bank the bank will bring the the other 200 in that example. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I understand right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And look, so, some guys. So you, some guys. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Uh, I was no, well, asking, like, so you actually managed to raise a hundred million dollars. Yeah. No, not yet. Not yet. We're uh, we're early in the fund. That's what that fund max is out at. And then okay. what we do is the same time same time as the fund is is a, a minimum of a hundred thousand. We also do one off assets where the minimum investment is uh, two fifty. So we've got right. an 80, 86, 86 unit investment uh, right now that's uh, under agreement and ready to close. Um, and uh, you know that investment is is just a smaller group of investors outside of the fund. And then what we can do is is we can actually have the fund partner with the investment groups when we do the one off single assets rather than putting them all in the fund. It's a little confusing, but it yeah, gives us options. It, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. What were you saying? Yeah. Yeah, it just gives just us like options. Something. Yeah, yeah the, it, it gives us options. So the fund is what they call a blind pool. Mm-hmm. So instead of, you know, Alrex says, hey, Dave, I got 250000 You know, I want to invest with you. Well, in the fund, that two hundred and fifty just sits in a buying pool. It mm-hmm. receives a preferred rate of return of 6%, and then quarterly distributions – targeted at eight to eight to 10%, uh, 10 to 14%. But we take all of that capital and buy as many different apartment complexes as we can. Right. Yeah. And then some investors say, you know, I want to be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, Dave, here's 250, but I want to put it on a specific deal, just one deal, not a whole bunch of deals. So that's how we we differ differentiate between the two. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. how much of like um, how much of returns do you actually get as a company? Uh, you get what I mean? Like, hey, let's say if yeah. I buy a, yeah, what what's kind of net like? What's the percentage of net profit that the company, that the fund gets? Yeah. Yeah. No. Great question. So, you know, I get paid. My money is is based off of the performance of the assets inside uh-huh. the fund. So yeah. the, the fund structure works like this. And as for example, it's what we call a, a six and 25. And basically okay. what that means is the first 6% of all profits go to the investors. Over 6%, we then split that profit with them, 75-25. 75% of all the profits go to the investors. We as the fund managers earn 25% of the profits. Then when we okay. sell everything at the end, it's the same on the back end. Mm. So, so they, they get 75, uh, you get 25 as well. And that's anything up yeah. to 6%, right? And everything over 6%. But Got that, that 25%, that 25% that, that, that is on our profit side, you got to remember, we also run a business with that. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like we run, we run the fun, the marketing, right? We, we, we have to keep the machine moving forward at the same time. Yeah. So, you know, as, as fund managers, we're probably coming in at an equal share once everything's divvied up at around 6% ourselves because of the cost that we, we incur. So our investors have oh, zero yeah. costs. We carry all the costs of running the business as well. So 6%, um, that means, uh, like, so the first 6% that they get, they will get a full 6%, right? So let's say if you yeah. get maybe 5%, so they, they'll get a full 5%, and then the company yeah. won't get, a, okay, got it. We, we wouldn't make anything. We wouldn't make anything on the cash flow, correct? I correct. See. So if so that's an investor... Yeah. Okay, yeah, keep going. No, go ahead. You go ahead. Okay. Um, if an investor is very intelligent, okay, and like he knows how to play the real estate game very well, yeah. would you, would he, should he do his own investments or should he go with your fund? <laughs> that's a great question. It depends <laughs> whether he wants a job or not, right? Does he okay. want a job or does he want to just passively collect checks? It's as simple as that, right? That's true. Does that investor, you know, even with, with their skills and intelligence, do they want to deal with uh, the liability of, of real estate? Do they want to deal with tenant challenges? Do they want to deal with vacancies? Do they want to deal with, you know, city ordinances? 
Uh, is their asset protection structure so strong uh, that they can sleep well at night? Um, are they strong enough to raise capital themselves? Do they want to put all their money in one, one basket? And if they answer mm-hmm. yes to all of those things because they've got the skill sets, then go get the bigger piece of the pie. But, you know, um, even, you know, sophisticated investors who know the game, look at our, our PPM, our private placement memorandum, which is like the business plan for the fund. And they look at it and they go, yeah, I don't want to do all that work. You do it, you know, and I'll take a, a smaller, a smaller percentage of the profits, if you will. So, you know, right. it just depends on how much work they want to do. Some people want to do the work and some, some people don't. So what made you decide to start? Okay. So this fund is, you, you own this fund, right? Like you're the, you're the top guy in this fund, right? So what yeah, made you decide yeah. to start this fund? Um, it's, you know, it's a 20 year exit for me. I'm, I'm 54 years old. Uh, my acquisitions officer, Walter, is uh, he's 56. He's a couple of years older than me. And then Eric, uh, like I said, the younger guy brings all of the, um, all of the systems and the processes to the table, you know, so the investors have access to their money and they can see what's going on. You know, why did I start the fund? Because it, it has to, it now was the right time to do it. Um, the, the need for apartment housing in the Florida market where we invest um, is growing. It's not diminishing. Um, the influx of people into that marketplace from the Northeast in New York and Connecticut and other parts of the country is, is freaking huge. The international investors uh, are screaming, you know, that they, they want, they want high yield opportunities, English investors, European investors, Asian investors, you know, they're not getting these kinds of yields. You know, America is, it, it's on sale. Um, you're not hearing it in the news yet. You will 18 months from now. We're already buying uh, at steep discounts because we're, we're in the marketplace. So now is the right time to do it. That's why we started it. And it's a, uh, you know, plus having all the team in place to execute on it. Got it. I see. So, okay, what are the reasons why America, like why, why is now the best time to invest? Is it because of the virus or because yeah, of look, it's a, the market? It's a combination. The, pri- the price of housing in America, single family housing is through the roof. So a lot of people are priced out of ownership, number one. Number two, um, we've got a moratorium um, and a forbearance over here as part of the COVID. The forbearance meaning people don't have to pay their mortgages and the moratorium um, meaning that some renters don't have to pay their rent. So, you know, Uh one would say, well, that, that doesn't make sense. You need renters. Well, we only buy based on the numbers that are today, right? The cash flow, uh, the, the rent coming in on an asset is what creates its value. So we buy based on yeah. the numbers that are, that are current. So that puts us in a good buying position. Um, and then, the, like I said, the movement of um, people from the metropolitan areas and the bigger cities, you know, is, is really what's creating this massive opportunity for us. But the fact that um, a lot of the deals that we buy, we're buying them from what we call mom and pop operators. They're the smaller, you know, like, husband and wife yeah. team, for example, a family team that, that, you know, bought a 50 or a hundred unit complex and got no idea how to manage it. And now with COVID coming in there and, uh, you know, hurting them on the reserves and the cash flow, you know, they're just, they're just trying to sell these properties as fast as they can. So, you know, that's, that's, that's why, man, it's like the stars are aligned. It's the right time to invest in these assets with us. It's the right time for us to buy them. So, so okay, just to recap, so you said, um, small houses, uh, 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 ex- uh, getting more and more expensive so people cannot afford it anymore so they, they lose ownership and then for parents people won't need to pay their rent right yeah, and then, yeah. M- memorandum how, how do I spell that yeah yeah so forbearance is um, it's memorandum a, the, the other one yeah that you say. A, a mor- moratorium moratorium, so a moratorium okay. on the fact of you know a lot of a lot of um, tenants haven't had to pay their rent in a while because of their, you know, the job situation over here. COVID put so many people out of work. So with the mm-hmm. combination of the moratorium and the forbearance, people can't afford to buy single family homes. The inventory is low. And there's a lot of people who can't afford to pay for the homes that they have, but they haven't felt the pain yet because of the forbearance that's been created. So, oh, yeah. you know, it's, uh, you know, you just have to look at the fundamentals to know it's the, the right opportunity. I see. So what, like, what advice will you give to someone who wants to start their own fund? 
Um, yeah, the, the reason why I'm asking this because okay, I'm 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 coach, right? So I got about one thousand three hundred paid clients, and I coach them yeah. on marketing and everything. And yeah. I've always wanted to uh, like buy and sell businesses, like acquire, like you know, start a fund to buy and sell businesses. So yeah. what kind of advice yeah, no, would you look, give to someone? Yeah, you, my advice would be is is really really test and measure. Um, what your marketing funnel looks like to bring in high net worth investors, number one. And then number two, your due diligence packet needs to be exceptional. And what I mean by that is, is when an investor looks at, uh, at any group that's raising capital, that investor wants to see a track record. Uh, they want to see, um, you know, uh, infrastructure. They want to see that um, they have access to their capital visually, even if it's not you know, take your money out once it's already in, which they can't do. So, you know, having the, all the systems in place is critical. Um, having somebody at the, the top of the pyramid, the business pyramid, um, who's accountable and yet at the same time accessible. Those, those points are just just critical. And then make sure you're doing it legally. You know what I mean? Whatever whatever the legal structure is in, in wherever you are in the world uh, to make sure that you're, uh, you know, not, not, no, 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 you know, predatory shit, man. I mean, you know, put a mm-hmm. put a good person in a good investment so everybody wins. That kind of stuff. So that's yeah. how I look at it. That's that's the advice I would give. So how do you get your first few investors? Was it like high net worth people or? Yeah, look, man. I've I've been in I've been in this business for uh, for almost what 13, 14 years now. Uh, mm-hmm. My partner Walter, you know, started real estate in nineteen eighty six. So, you know, the amount of people that I've interacted with, touched gloves with, done, done business with uh, at smaller levels and bigger levels throughout my career, um, it was easy to get the first few investors in, right? Friends and family, they call it. So that, that, wasn't, that wasn't the challenge. The challenge is was dialing in the marketing afterwards for the people that, that don't know me yet. So, you know, your first few investors will be people who know you, care about you, trust you, support you, um, and then you just grow from there. And so how, how do you do the marketing for the coal market or like, you know? Yeah, we, we've got a number of different marketing streams. We do a lot of uh, outreach work to, um, to investors on, on LinkedIn. Uh, we do a lot of um, social media marketing. We do a lot mm-hmm. of direct mail marketing. Uh, we run on uh, online uh, live events. Uh, we, we, we do some of that as well. And now, uh, now I'm figuring out how to leverage Clubhouse to uh, to also to also you know build out build out some marketing funnels. I got some meetings with some of the players over there tomorrow, so we'll see what that looks like as well. Yeah, you know, real estate clubhouses, right? I've been I've been listening to Clubhouse a lot. Uh, yeah, I've been listening to Grant Cardone and so many people on Clubhouse. Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, okay, so so you raise. So you raise capital. So have you ever raised capital from Clubhouse before, so far, or got any uh, no. leads? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm still, I'm still, uh, I'm still figuring out what, what the play is there. You know what I mean? I want, I want to be a service there, uh, but there's so many blowhards on there that are just trying to dominate these rooms. It, it kind of cracks me up a little bit. So I just, I'm just settling in the background. You know, taking a look at the landscape and then, then figure out what, what's, what's next from there. Because there's some, there's some very influential, decent people there. I just got to figure yeah. out, you know, what the alignments look like going forward. I feel that Clubhouse, um, what the, the amount of access that Clubhouse gives is unprecedented. Like, there's no other platform that you get to see. You know. You know why that is, is because it's brand new. Correct. Yeah. It's brand new. It's a brand new environment. Nobody's, nobody's monetized it yet. It's like Facebook was free for, for two years. You could grab any, you know, any email address that you wanted in the first two years of Facebook. And then they realized that they had something that was valuable. And, you know, and then we, you know, everybody started paying for Facebook ads, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it became the machine that it is today. So, you know, right. being there at the incipient phase of, of, um, of Clubhouse, uh, I think is, is a game changer. You know, what, what, what URLs are, are people grabbing right now? You know, I, uh, I, I grabbed um, bestmods.club, greatmods.club, because they're using mods as the, the moderator. Follow this moderator, that moderator. So, you know, uh-huh. D- Dave Seymour dot club, 
follow me at <laughs> DaveSeymour.club, you know, at my clubhouse, uh, you know, uh, angle. So, you know, all of that stuff is, is developmental. The value is huge. Um, it can get a little re repetitive um, if you're, you know, if you have some experience. But that means you've got to start giving away what you've already got, you know what I mean? And sharing some of your own skill sets, if you will. I still love doing podcasts like this, man. I mean, I get to meet new people in new places. So that's, that's cool, too. Awesome. So, okay, that's cool. So is there any, like, um, any last words of advice that you want to advise people on? Or, you know, okay, okay let's say there's an entrepreneur that is just starting out off the block. Or maybe yeah. someone who's, a, who's in a corporate job for 16 years. What yeah. advice would you give them? Uh, look, find, it's, it's, it sounds corny, but it's true. Eric, you got to find your passion, man. Like you're passionate, right? I can see that. You got a good, you got a twinkle <laughs> in your eye, right? Big smile. You're enjoying the time that you're spending. You're always thinking about how to make it better. I can see it. It's all going through your mind. Like I, I can see it ticking over. <laughs> You know, people, people tend to show up for, for, for mediocrity every single day, you know, mm -hmm. same old, same old, they call it over here and uh, find your passion, really, right? If you could do something every day and you didn't care whether you got paid for it, what would that be? And 99% uh, of the world can't answer that question, brother. You know, that's what separates the one percenters from the rest. Um, so find your passion then align yourself with people who are proficient in your passion. Learn, educate, don't speculate. Invest in yourself first, right? Coaches, mentors, training, you know, like you said, running, running coaching programs for people who want to learn to do something different. You know, you keep on doing what you've been doing. You keep on getting what you've been getting, right? We know that. So um, mm -hmm. that's my advice. Find your passion and then align yourself with people who are, experts in that field and then just go for it man go for it you know double down go for it so after your first seminar like how long later did you start implementing and like actually starting something yeah i was 30 days man i mean i was i was right <laughs> at it i read i read everything uh, i made a lot of mistakes oh. but i i wasn't look dude I looked at my class back then. There was probably 300 people in this event. It was a Russ Whitney real estate event. And, um, you know, Russ, Russ Whitney went international with, with that brand. And then Kiyosaki bought his brand. And, uh, you know, I looked, there were 300 people in that room. And I, I don't think, I don't know. I don't know anybody in that room other than me that, that went out and kind of did, did it. And um, I, want, I wondered why. And for me, it was, I, I was all in, you know what I mean? Like, I don't do anything half-assed, you know? Mm. There's no, there's no freaking point, brother. You know, if you're going like to half-ass it, don't yeah. bother, you know? Be, be all in, be committed. So that's, that, that was me. I might be an exception to the rule. Maybe I'm just a freak. I don't know, but that's, that's, that's who I am. How, how many percent of the 300 do you think actually did what you did? Or like... Something similar, like they started. Yeah, dude, I don't know. I, I think it's in the, I think it's in the sing, single digits. I really do. I, I honestly believe that, you know, um, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, right? That's a saying. That's not yeah. true. If you put some, if you put some salt in the oats that the horse eats, he gets a little thirsty. You know what I mean? So, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you help somebody, um, you know, get out of their own way? Is, is really what it is, right? Yeah, my own worst enemy is what a, a lot of people have been in their own lives and careers. So, you know, I just, you can't, you can't save everyone. Not everybody's going to do the right thing, right? Take care of yourself first and then you can take care of other people, you know? So I think it's a low percentage of success, but, you know, as long as I deliver what I said I was going to do, then I can sleep well at night in the education or the, you know, the informational space. So if someone wants to find you, how can they find you on Instagram or, or you know, yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a website address there. Um, but okay. yeah, you can, you, you, you can actually call us. I mean, 781-922-4418. It's a US code. Um, but Instagram, Dave Seymour, um, uh, S-E-Y-M-O-U-R. Uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. Dave, uh, Dave Seymour 343. Twitter. Dave Seymour 343, um, LinkedIn, 
I don't know, man. You can find me. If you want to find me, you can find me. You know what I mean? If you put in the effort, you can find me. That's, that's the answer to that. But free, freedomventure.com. Or uh, let's use the uh, let's use the uh, the clubhouse link. <laughs> Dave Seymour dot club. There you go. You can get Dave me there Seymour as well. <laughs> and what does three forty three mean? Uh, that's um, that's from my my years as a firefighter. So um, I was a I was a firefighter on nine eleven, and uh, we uh, lost we lost three hundred and forty three New York firefighters that day. When they oh. uh, when they flew those those planes into the towers, and um, I, I never forgot that. I, I still still think about it this many years later. So I align myself with charities that support firefighters and military and build homes for um, for veterans. So yeah, that's what the three forty three is for. Yeah, it's 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 so it's so, such a long time already, but until now. It- the pain still, the, the memory still sticks. Sure. Yeah. Sure. All right. Thanks for being so legendary. And uh, yeah, if anyone wants to um, um, look at other podcasts or interview, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and uh, I'll, send, I'll send all of you the links and everything. Okay. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thanks, brother. Did you get value from this video? If you did, make sure you do these four things. Number one, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Make sure you turn on the notification bell so that you'll be the first to be notified whenever I have a new video that goes live. Number two, like this video. Number three, comment what are the three biggest learning lessons or the big three biggest takeaways you've gotten from this video. And number four, share this video with as many friends as you can who you believe will get value as well. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you real soon.